Hello, my name is Paul and welcome to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I want to give you some tips for how to get a little bit more out of Calendly. Now, Calendly is a scheduling tool that I've been using for the best part of about five years at this point. Uh, since day one, when I started my consulting business, um, it is a scheduling tool which allows me to set my availability. So if uh, new potential clients want to book an introductory call with me, they can do that on my website and existing clients as well can use my scheduling links to book time to get onto my calendar. So for a consulting or freelancing business, Calendly is a fantastic tool. But even if you're just like uh, wanting to find a more efficient way to schedule meetings, Calendly really is an incredible tool. Uh, could, I really couldn't imagine using my business, uh, running my business without this, this tool. So this video, I'm just going to give you some tips for using Calendly. This video is kind of intended, I'm assuming people have done their basic Calendly setup already. You've maybe set up an event type and you're ready to learn a little bit more. And I just want to point out a few little tips and things that you maybe missed when you set up your account. So the first thing I want to point out here, if I just go into one of my event types, let's go into my consulting introductory call, are the notification settings. So when you are customizing an event type, you can have a Calendly send emails before and after a meeting. So they can get an email reminder and I can personalize these. So if I click on that personalize link, I can actually customize the default text in here. Now, if you just leave it, uh, Calendly is gonna send like a fairly generic reminder that, hey, you have your call coming up with Paul pretty soon. But I can customize this if I want as well. And uh, if you want to put in maybe some questions or a bit of an agenda for the for the meeting, you can you can customize all of this content. You can actually set up the time delay as well. So this is set to go 24 hours before. And I can even add multiple reminders. If I want to do a, a 24 and a 12 hour reminder, I can do that. So that's the first thing that's just worth having a look at. Even if you just want to personalize the, the message a little bit, add a bit of your own personality, it's worth jumping into these uh, email uh, reminder settings. Likewise, and I don't do this, but you may want to, you can send a follow-up email after the meeting. So if I turn this on and personalize this, I can have something go out one hour or you know a day after or something saying you know thank you for your for attending you know feel free to book with me again something like that so really nice really simple way to send reminders and follow up with people after meetings now something else I want to point out on this notification screen when you are setting up your event types is I highly recommend if you've connected to your Google Calendar or your Microsoft 365 calendar to switch to calendar invitations what this does is it actually puts a calendar event on your let's say Google Calendar and it adds both people you and the attendee as recipients this is really useful because it means if you make changes uh, to the appointment you can actually drag it the appointment around on your calendar the attendee will automatically get those changes so you don't actually have to reschedule in Calendly I mean you can if you want those email reminders but you can just move the event around and say right we're gonna delay by an hour and everyone that's been invited will get that change. So I do recommend uh, setting up the email confirmations. That's also useful if you ever delete the uh, calendar invite as well. You can just delete it from your calendar and it will actually cancel the meeting in Calendly as well. So the calendar and Calendly talk together really well. Now when getting started, some people don't understand um, that they can send, you can send attendees a link to your main booking page a bit like this, just by clicking um, clicking this link up here. It's usually calendly.com slash your name or your company name. Um, but you can see here, I'm actually only displaying two of my event types, these two green ones here. Um, the other event types like my 30, one hour and 90 minute meetings, they're actually not showing on here because I only want people on this screen to be able to book an introductory call with me. And so what you can do if you don't want people to have access to certain event types is you can in your settings, um, hide a particular event type. And so if I come into the when can people book this event, if I go to the bottom, I can make this a secret event down here. That means that this event type will not show on my main account booking screen. So that's really useful if, yeah, you want to keep certain event types private for, for a different use case. While I'm on the screen, you may notice I have this uh, custom message up here, which is really useful because it lets you kind of um, explain something or give a little bio about yourself before people book. And so you can edit this from your main account settings. And so if I go there now, you can see here, I have this little bio 
um, yeah, please note these meetings are for potential clients. And I'm actually, I'm taking next week off. So I've said here, note, I'm taking time off between these dates. So when people are booking with me here, they can clearly see, okay, cool, Paul's unavailable uh, for, for those particular days. So it's definitely worth, in your settings, customizing these details if you want to put in a little bio about yourself uh, or, or, or some kind of explanation about your availability. Some other things to pay attention to in the settings, if I go to the calendar connection settings, uh, this screen is definitely worth um, reviewing, particularly around which calendars you want Calendly to check for conflicts uh, in. Now, I use different calendar categories. So in my Google Calendar, I have a, a, a green calendar for appointments, I have a calendar called busy and actually I do use that with Calendly so if I don't want to be booked during a particular period of time I can block off a section of time and say that I'm busy. Um, Paul is like my default Google uh, Calendar account and then things like apps and sports which are other accounts or calendars that I use. Calendly will check all of those for conflicts. Now I do have other calendar categories that I don't mind if Calendly schedules on top of those things. But you do want to check your conflict settings here to make sure you don't get booked if you've already scheduled something for yourself. If you use the Chrome browser, you'll see you can install the Calendly extension up here to get quick access to your uh, different event types for quickly accessing links. But the feature I really like in this extension is the ad hoc meeting. And so this could be useful. Maybe you just want to schedule a one-time meeting. The person's not really finding any options in your available settings. But I can say here, right, I want to schedule a one-hour event. And I'm available here, here, here. Or, you know, I can, I can pick like a number of these slots and uh, I can set my location, you know, office or I might put in like a Zoom link in here and uh, I can then create a link down here. And if I put this link into an email, um, if I actually load it up now, um, somebody will be able to pick from the available times that I've given them. So this is quite useful if, yeah, somebody's not able to find uh, an available time in the Calendly event types that you've already set up, but you just say, look, here's two or three times that I'm available. You can send them an ad, ad hoc meeting. So that's a really nice feature in the Chrome browser. And the final thing worth doing with Calendly is checking out the different integrations that are available. I've connected uh, my Calendly account to Zoom. So if I go to one of my event types, in my location settings, you can see when somebody books a call with me, Calendly is automatically going to schedule that call in Zoom and create a unique Zoom meeting link for me as well. So that's a great integration. Um, you can also connect to Google Meet or other web conferencing services. I've also connected to Stripe, so I have my priority option here where people can actually pay uh, $50 to book a slot with me for these special times that I'm available and payments will then get paid out to my Stripe account. And using Zapier down here, there are loads more things you can do. So I have uh, connected Calendly to things like Pipedrive, which is my sales CRM, and Asana, uh, which is my project management tool. So if new leads or clients book calls with me, I can have new deals be created in my CRM or tasks get created in Asana, and that's all possible through Zapier. If you have any questions about that or if you want help with setting up any integration, feel free to reach out to me. I am a Zapier certified expert and can help with that kind of thing for you as well. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.